Hi, it's so great to see you again. Welcome to another tutorial. Today we're making a silver saddle ring with embellishments and a gemstone. In this project I will use a handy template I purchased on Etsy. This one is for 0.80 mm or a 20 gauge metal sheet. The shape is simple and I'd say this will give us a medium sized saddle ring. I'm attaching the paper onto the metal sheet with the double sided tape. I will go for size 7 so I can cut off the excess now. I will use the 4 odd saw blade for this metal thickness. Time to sand and smooth out the edges. I'm going to use hand files and buffing sticks to do that. Nancy said that this is the stage when we should do any texturing, so if you want to hammer your ring, now is the time to do it. Doing it after the ring has been shaped and soldered may affect its structure and size and you may not be able to fix it. While hammering, turn it around and flatten with the row height mallet to maintain a flat shape. If your metal sheet is thick, you may need to anneal it first to soften it. Anneal again after hammering to soften before shaping the ring. A handy trick is to mark your metal with a sharpie marker. You'll know your metal has been annealed once the marker disappears. Now it's time to arrange the embellishments. I didn't have a clear idea for this ring, so now I'm just playing around with some elements and gems. Only the flat elements will be soldered at this point. I'm going to solder these small elements using a soldering paste, which helps to control the amount of solder and keeps the embellishments in place. You can also use a sweat soldering technique here. Quench and pickle your metal after soldering. Time to shave the ring, but before I do, I'm going to use my bench polisher to sand and pre-polish the side of the sheet that will become the inner side of the ring. I can do it much faster this way and it will save me some time later on. I'm using a bench polisher by Pepe Tools with the Deco bristle wheels and a ventilating hood by Fordham. Let's shape the ring now. I will start by bending the middle part, which is harder, with the ring bending tool. 
Whether you're using ring bender or ring bandrel, make sure you frequently change the sides so that the ring is shaped evenly. Would you look at that? <laughs> the star fell off, probably wasn't soldered correctly, so I'll need to fix it. There, now everything is properly soldered together. Let's finish bending. I forgot to add stamping on the sides and unfortunately it is too late for that now. But it's okay, I will add some nice embellishments here. I'm closing the ring using ring bending pliers. As you can see, the gap isn't closed flush, so I'll show you a neat trick how to make it even and flush. Make sure the edges touch as much as possible and then use your jeweler's saw to cut through the gap. This will even out the edges. Another way is to use the nail file to sand the edges and make them flush. Don't worry about these uneven parts, we'll fix them after the ring is soldered. Looks good, let's solder it now. I'm using two little pieces of hard solder. The solder has flown and it filled the gap evenly, making a strong joint. Quench and pickle. First phase is completed. Even now the ring looks very nice, don't you think? But we're not done yet. Let's make a bezel for our gemstone now. I'm using a decorative gallery wire. For this solar ring design I will make a bezel complete with the back plate. This is a fine silver wire, so it's soft and easy to wrap around. It's also easy to melt, so be very careful when soldering. Avoid putting the flame directly on the metal, but move it around. Check the fit by placing the stone in the bezel. I'm going to solder the wire onto the back plate, but can you see the gaps? The solder won't flow unless the edge is flush, so we need to sand the bottom part first. Quenched and pickled as usual. Time to sew it out.
I'm going to solder my bezel on top of the ring like this. I know it's not the usual way, but I wanted to try the simpler option and see how it looks like. File down so that the bezel fits well. And I'm going to try using hard solder paste here. If that doesn't work, I'll just use the regular solder. But it looks like it worked well. Time to quench and pickle. Last soldering job will be to add these little silver balls and embellishments. Oops, I forgot this is wooden. <laughs> I'm tempted to add a little flower here as well. Hmm. I ended up adding the flower. The ring looks so nice freshly out of the pickle. Now's the time to clean and polish the ring. I will start by sanding the ring band and making it even. I'm using rotary tool and coarse eve silicone attachments, white and black ones. Then I moved on to some Deteco bristle discs, blue one, pink one and the finest green one to pre-polish the ring. And now I will polish it with the bench polisher and mop attachment with some orange laxi compound for final luster. It's important to hold your piece well while you use this machine because this may happen. The ring is very dirty with lots of compound residue, so I'm going to clean it off with a soft brush, soap and warm water. I'm now using some tiny bristle attachments to clean the bezel inside. And as the last cleaning step, I'm going to use this ultrasonic cleaner with a cleaning product inside to remove any residue from the polishing compound and dirt.
it looks very nice but I want to add some patina to bring out the details and make it even more interesting. I use Platinal Patina Solution. I am now removing the patina and giving the ring the final polish. Last step is to set the stone with the bezel pusher. How do you like the final effect? Are you going to try the saddle ring yourself? Huge thank you to Pepe Tools for making this episode possible. You can find their awesome tools including soldering paste, saw blades and the ring bender in the description below the video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out this video to watch another really cool project. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!